Hey guys, welcome back to Orms TV. Today we're out here at the range in the lovely Tukai, and we are going to give you guys a review on the all new DJI FPV. Now I've brought Jean, our broadcast manager along to take you guys through the nitty gritty of this drone. We're gonna show you guys footage of it. We're gonna fly it around here, literally dive into what it is all about because it is quite a big departure for DJI. So I'm handing you guys over to Jean and he's gonna take you through everything that's gonna happen here. Okay, so we're talking about the DJI's FPV drone. All right, this drone is, I mean, new for DJI. They started off with their FPV system about two years ago when they had their first goggles come out, the V1 goggles, and the air unit, which is basically a controller and a camera. However, you had to buy your own frame and props and motors and basically use their infrastructure with third-party parts to have a complete solution. Well, hello, DJI FPV drone. They've now manufactured their complete solution by themselves. And what I'm going to do is, I'm no DJI FPV specialist by all. I mean, I've flown drones all my life for the last seven years, but when it comes to this little puppy, it's a whole new ball game for me. So, for lucky for me, I've brought someone with that is a perfect specialist in the market. And Alan Ball from Flying Robots is probably the number one go-to guy when it comes to FPV in South Africa. So I've invited him here today to basically give us more of his experiences with a drone because we've been flying this thing for the last two days. I have zero knowledge, he has all of it. Let's welcome him. All right, so Adam Ball, Flying Robot. Tell us some more about yourself. So um, I started flying FPV about 10 years ago. Um, I got roped into this hobby with a friend who said, hey, I can go take this plane up at the time actually and fly it as if I'm sitting inside it wearing goggles FPV. And I was FPV, what is that? First person view. Probably the best experience of my life. We, uh, you know, when you take a beginner out on this, it's they, their minds are blown as soon as they wear the goggles and are up soaring with the birds and you, you feel like you're completely inside the craft. So as soon as I tried that, I was hooked. Six years ago, I started Flying Robot, uh, building and supplying parts for the DIY FPV market. And uh, we designed our own DIY drones, similar to the ones that can take the DJI Air unit, and we've been selling those in South Africa for the past six years. It's become extremely successful. We've got a massive community of great pilots around South Africa, all building their own drones. Awesome. It's awesome to see a company like DJI come into it with, with something that's more, as I'd say, beginner entry level, something that anyone could pick up and fly, because that's one of the biggest things with FPV that's a hurdle, is you actually can't learn all the skills you need to build the drone, and it's complex and complicated. It's, it's definitely for someone who's wanting to be more technical. Whereas DJI have put everything into one pack that I can pull it out the box and fly it right now, and I can easily hand it over to a beginner to fly for the first time. Awesome, awesome. So tell me, is it, a, is it just a hobby, or has it become a sport? Where has this gone? So, I mean, over the years, it's actually evolved to a full-on sport. So they now have, uh, obviously, the races that I'm sure people have seen on, online as well as uh, on TV, fully broadcast in the States on ESPN. Wow. Um, and it, it's become a full commercial sport, uh, especially the racing part of it. Of um, and then if you look at the other commercial side of it, it's the commercial filming side of it. So FPV is being integrated into uh, full-on TV ads, uh, movies, commercials, the whole lot. So it, it's, it's going, going everywhere. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Okay, cool. Let's delve in more about the actual product. So I see you've got a unit here with a controller. There we go. Oh, it's quite, it's quite, quite a piece of a kit. It's quite a piece of kit, and it's it's a lot of kit compact, in, in, and it's actually confined into a small space. If you think about all the tech that's gone inside to it. I see. There's obviously got a, a, a gimbal over here. Can you tell me more about that? So it's a gimbal, but it's only stabilized on the pitch axis. So I mean, a lot of the FPV cinematic footage that you'll see out there. You, you almost see as if the craft is soaring and flying and it actually rolls with the footage. And that's all about the FPV footage. That's the cinematic style that everyone wants to go for. And obviously with this drone, we get some stabilization on the pitch, so it's nice and smooth. It's got stabilization on the footage afterwards, so sort of once you've recorded the footage, it's actually stabilizing that all for you. So when you take your SD card out, it's pre-stabilized, it looks all smooth, and, and you are flying in a howling gale. So. Oh, wow. Uh, that's that's packed into the thing. It's obviously a 4K camera, 60 frames a second. Which is cinematic. It's cinematic. And uh, the other things you're looking at there, I see you see little sensors at the bottom. 
So it's got downward facing sensors, obviously. So when you bring it into land, it's going to do exactly the same as the, the Mavic. Um, it's got forward facing sensors. It's going to be warnings on the goggles, like when you're getting close to objects. Exactly. Okay, great. I see these props over here have got three blades of them. Yeah. What's they, with that? And they don't fold. So yeah, there's no folding. These are very rigid. They are proprietary to DJI. So it's the one thing I would probably as a more coming from the professional space and, and coming from the DIY space, it would be nice if we could use other props on the drone. But obviously with DJI, they go proprietary. So they clip in and it, again, it's it's made for, for somebody not m putting the props on the wrong way around, like they do with all their drones. Yeah, see there's a red dot and no dot. Exactly. So that they've obviously kept throughout the whole yeah. range of drones. And they've gone with a really, really great um, mix of uh, polymers in terms of plastics for the, for the props. And a lot of the videos I've seen of guys crashing them purposely, <laughs> Actually, we watched that together. And uh, they bend props and put them back and they seem to be quite rigid. They don't break very easily. They're not very brittle. So it's it's made for the task, which is what these these drones do, is, is they end up crashing and they do end up hitting things uh, here and there, so. Okay, so I take it that the most weight of this obviously sits in this chunky piece of a- uh, In the battery. LiPo. Yes. So tell me more about that. So that's a 6S, so six cell, 2000 milliamp hour battery. Um, most of the drones that we're seeing that the guys are DIYing nowadays are running 6 cell. Um, yeah. It gives you longer flight times, which obviously this drone now does 20 minutes that they're claiming. And, and I've seen videos where they do that. Um, the other advantage with that is obviously you've got 20 minutes flight time, you can go quite far, which you're not supposed to do. But the, the battery gives you more than enough. It's the major weight in the, in the drone and the drone's got more than enough power to, to cope with that extra weight. So you say going far. Now, my background specializing in, in Mavic side, you know, we've got Lightbridge 2 yes. in the Mavic 2 Pro. What does this have that allows it to fly far and how far is far? So obviously the system is OcuSync 3. So Well, that's an improvement from the previous, previous generation. Previous generation. So obviously you've got your control, which is one of these, and you've got your video, uh, which is actually going to the set of goggles. So, and that's giving us full HD, 1080p to the goggles, live feed with two, uh, 28 milliseconds latency, which is hardly anything nowadays. That is incredible. For full HD video, that's incredible. That's pretty much it for the drone. Um, obviously got a spot where we can put an SD card in. Yep. Yep, an SD card slot. And You've got another SD card slot on the goggles, so you can actually record live on the goggles as well. Oh wow, it's like a backup recording? A backup recording. Okay. Um, obviously the drone has got full uh, capability to be as, as capable as your Mavic. Um, we actually took it up in some gale force northwester winds here the other day and handed it over to a complete novice who had never flown before in the normal mode and, and he was completely comfortable. It, it handled the wind like a dream. I was really blown away about the capability of that there. Yeah. All right, so that's the drone. Let's talk a bit more about the controller. controller. But what I like about what DJI did with the controller is it's now very ergonomical. It's, it's what most gamers are used to in terms of a, a gamer style controller. It looks so much like my PlayStation 5 controller. Exactly, you know, and we've got other, um, we'll show some other controllers that are now in the, in the sort of more DIY FPV market that have gone this way as well. And I think DJI sort of took notes out of their, their feather for that. Um, it's got some great access to switches. I mean, if you're a thumber or even what we call a pincher, yeah. it still works. Um, obviously, it's got the three modes. So in terms of the buttons, you've got the normal mode, which is obviously for anyone getting into this and flying it for the first time. Oh, Maybe you've owned a Mavic. I thought it was noob mode. But <laughs> Close. Normal mode. What other modes do we actually have? So they've unlocked a new mode, which is called sport mode, S mode. And um, now it turns the, the drone into a complete other beast. It's basically a Mavic on steroids. You can go a hell of a lot faster than any other Mavic can. You can film amazing shots. It's even got a cruise control, so you can initiate a button to then hold the speed, hold the height, and all you do is steer with one side. So I noticed when you were flying the other day that it, it doesn't bank like a Mavic does. It does more of like an aeroplane bank. Exactly. So, and it, it's much better looking in the, in the goggles. It's smoother. In terms of cinematic flying, it's okay. a much better picture. Um, and then obviously the last mode is M mode, and that's manual mode. So that's more for guys like myself who've been flying FPV for a couple of years, we understand full acro mode um, and we can actually take the controls and it, it feels like one of our, our drones that we've built. So break that down for me because I mean, I don't come out of an acro field, I come out of a cinematic field. Yeah. So what is acro? So acro, I mean, acro flying for us is still, you're, you're flying with full um, stick control. There's no stabilization. So if you let go of the sticks, the, the attitude of the drone stays exactly the same. Okay. You actually, there's no, oh, let go of the sticks and it comes back to a stabilized position with GPS and all of that helping you. None of that's helping you. You are in full control. 
So you are in control of the, the, the camera. Acro meaning acrobatics. And acrobatic as well. So, so you can set how fast this thing rolls, how fast it flips, all of that, but you're in full control when you're doing those flips. And how much you pull the stick is how much it's gonna flip in speed. So barrel roll, loop-de-loops. All of that. This, this wow. drone is fully capable of doing all of that. Obviously, for anyone who's a beginner, don't just go full to manual mode. Go through the steps that DJI suggests. What's even great about this drone, it comes with a simulator. So awesome. that means crash on the simulator first before you progress onto manual mode on the drone. Because obviously it's, it's not a, a cheap price tag. No, it's not. Um, and you don't want to mess it up first go. So really do start on, on what they call noob mode. We'll call it noob mode. Noob mode. <laughs> and, then, and then head on to sport mode, which is more than capable of, of really getting some great shots and assisting you because you've still got that assistance from, from the GPS and the, the accelerometers. and. Awesome. I believe this is a get out of jail button. There is. So even in manual mode, you could literally hit this button and it'll go straight back into normal mode and stay where it is and, and wait for you to sort of gain your composure because maybe you got a bit out of control and then bring it back to yourself. And it's, it's, it's a lifesaver. Or so, always say an oh switch. Oh switch. <laughs> so flying it basically, doing a loop, not gonna make it, hit the oh switch, 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 and it levels out. It'll level out. Okay. So Alan, I see there's a little scroll wheel there, which is very familiar to me because I believe it's the same as a Mavic. Yes, so this scroll wheel obviously gives you um, the ability to change the angle of the camera. This could be on the fly while you're filming. Um, so you could literally fire over something and look down and look up. Um, as well as in manual mode, setting the angle at which you want to set your camera at. So for, for, for a more advanced FPV pilot, they have a specific angle they want to fly the camera at because it's what they're used to. Okay. So I can set it to 25 degrees because that's what's comfortable for me when I fly. Fix it, leave it there. But uh, it's also great for doing some reverse shots, which I think was one of the nice things about this drone is you could set the camera to low uh, like that and you could fly backwards as a, as a car might be driving towards you. So there are some really great ideas coming out of this drone just from uh, chatting to a few guys in the industry. Great stuff. All right, so what else comes in this kit? So you've got another set of goggles. Ah, yeah. let's get the goggles. Let's get the goggles. Okay, so the goggles. The goggles. So 1080p, they've got multiple channels. Um, obviously getting full HD signal from, uh, from the camera and crystal clear. Like compared to the V1 goggles, we had a bit of breakup, a bit of glitching. These, I haven't experienced that yet. We haven't tried to push the limits in terms of distance or anything like that yet. Okay. But I, I've flown between trees, around trees, and tried to get some sort of stuff between myself and even took it in the warehouse and ran around, ran around a, a metal structure trying to get some multi-pathing and, and I couldn't get it to glitch. And that's, that's Ocusing 3 that's doing all that for you? All the work, so. All right, so run me through the goals. I mean, I see there's a whole bunch of buttons on there, yeah. some LEDs, some input and output ports. You've got a little battery, so basically okay. uh, a small battery that will keep you going. It's running on a uh, USB-C uh, USB plug. Okay. Um, we've obviously got all our controls and menus happen here and it's all happening up front on the goggles themselves. So, so you can literally scroll through the menu, change your settings, do some configuration for the drone, uh, all while you're on, on the goggles. So themselves. no more cell phone needed to go no. through the app? So the only thing you need your cell phone for is using an OTG cable to activate the drone okay. and that you attach your cell phone to using, obviously you need some internet to do that. Yeah. And once you've done that, there's no cell phone needed at the field at all. Great stuff. Anything else about the goggles that stands out? I see there's a, a, a micro SD port. Yes, so uh, all the uh, footage coming to the goggles live can be recorded onto an SD card on the goggles. So if you ever wanted to refer back, let's just say the worst case scenario happened, you lost the drone, you needed to refer back to the, the footage. Yeah. If you're recording here on the goggles, you could review that footage on the goggles, as oh, well wow. as use that footage for, for other stuff if you wanted to in terms of in, in footage stuff. The goggles can also do uh, spectator mode. So you can watch someone else fly if you've got a set of oh, goggles. that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So we're hoping to use that for some demos, but it's exactly that. If you've got another set of goggles, you can have someone ride along with you. That's brilliant. What are these little dots over here? So that's um, showing the channels. There's obviously multiple channels, so you can have more than one of these flying at a time. Okay, that's brilliant. So you could race, you could fly with friends. 
they're on a, a set channel, so they'll give you A, B, or C channels to choose. Um, obviously, if we're flying together, I'll choose channel A, you choose channel B, and then we can actually fly together and, and try and chase each other and stuff like that, but yeah. that's what it's for. Naturally, I'll be channel B, he'll be channel A. <laughs> All right, great. So the goggles have got a new futuristic look. I see there's a nice head strap over here. Yeah. I'm sure they sit pretty comfortable. They do. I mean, in terms of form factor from V1 to V2, they're identical. Okay. I don't think you can actually really tell the difference between the V1 and V2 visually if you looked at them just off the bat. So only when you put them on, you actually have a look. Exactly. And I also think, I mean, there's some, some future stuff coming. I know DJI have, have sort of hinted at some of the things they want to do with the V2 goggles. Okay. And, and they did it with the V1s where, you know, they were released and the, the frame rates weren't as good. The megapixels that they were pushing through in terms of bit rates weren't as high. And then just a couple of firmware updates, they were up at what this sort of rate is seeing, which is 50 megs awesome. uh, transmission. So so I think that what's going to come, and this is sort of my speculation, is that potentially with the USB-C output, we might be seeing a video out attached to a cell phone so that somebody else could still ride along with not having another set of goggles. Of goggles. That's um, great. And that's perfect. I mean, also, if you look at commercial industry, you always want sort of a BT signal and that the director can view while you're flying it because he obviously wants to see what you're flying and not have to show him after recorded footage. Of course. So, and that's quite key. So lastly, I see there's these little spikes coming out of here. Yeah. Are they just for looks or so, actually So these are the purpose? antennae. It, it, it's actually quite a nice futuristic alien yeah. kind of look. Very um, high tech. Very high tech. Um, yes, those are all antennas. And the, the great thing about these is actually you can upgrade them. So there is, okay. there is upgrade packs. We've, you know, at Flying Robot, we also sell upgrade antennas, which are more patch antennas. We give you further distance and further, further penetration. So even clearer signals for, for longer flights. I'm really blown away by this, this piece of equipment. It's, it's so much different from what I'm used to in the Mavic field. Um, there's only one thing left. We've got to fly it. Let's go fly it. Well guys, thank you very much for joining us for that review of DJI's all new FPV drone. For those of you who are interested, Alan and Flying Robots details will be in the description down below. As always, if there's anything that you would like to know or anything that you would like us to know, drop it in the comments down below. We love hearing from you guys and we will respond to all of your comments. If you enjoy the content that we're putting out, please consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out a lot. And until next time, guys, cheers. Ciao. Ciao.